This video is going to take us through methods of measuring internal efficiency using the standard progression method of wastage calculation. Uh, wastage calculation. We have looked at the cohort analysis method or how we can determine the internal efficiency in the educational system. But in this video, we're going to look at the standard progression method of calculating wastage or determining the internal efficiency. Now, you use this method when you cannot obtain reliable and detailed data or information about the indices of wastage, especially on promotion uh, rate, repetition rate, and dropout rate. When you know you cannot actually attain these rates, then you use the standard progression method. Again, the standard progression method uses great wise enrollment, which is easy to obtain. Now, let's look at the steps you will take to calculate the wastage ratio using the standard progression method. The first step is for you to collect the grade wise enrollment data. You collect the grade wise enrollment data. It may go, it depends on the number of years you want to look through, uh, but you must work within the years that uh, that is allowed to go through the grades. Now you use use the obtained enrollment data to obtain the progression ratio for the system. Just like we did when we are talking about the cohort method, here also you need to generate the ratio from the grade wise enrollment data. Then you calculate the standard progression ratio from the progression uh, ratios that you have. Now you obtain the ID and the actual input ratio. You calculate the wastage. How do you do this? Let's look at this example quickly. Here is an example in table one. Here in this table, let's see what said grade wise enrollment of a state primary school by grade or class between 2011 to 2017. This is about seven years uh, enrollment plan. So here we have the first part the cell we should take. We have from one to six. So you take this enrollment. It's only the enrollment we are concerned with. Here you discover there is no repetition. There is no uh, dropout. There is no promotion. So we just have those that enrolled in the year. And we have the total of the number from year one to year six. In primary school, you have six years. So for this year 2011, how many enrolled in year one? How many enrolled into class three, class four, class five, and class six? So you sum it up, up to this. This arrow indicates the promotion that was going on. This assume at this level, this is higher. But again, in this case, there could be some error whereby you have uh, the, those in the following year, if they add those that are uh, maybe transferred from other schools. For example, in this case, you discover that from this year to this year, there is a reduction. From this year to this year, there is a reduction. But if you now have a higher enrollment, it means other persons have been added that are not in that particular cohort promoted to that level. So in a way, we still have to be sure that as the, uh, the promotion is going on, it's not higher because it's supposed to be decreasing. It is supposed not to be higher. When that happens, there is an error. Now, let's see what happens here. So the progression rate from grade 1 in year 2011 to grade 2 in year 2012. How will you calculate it in grade 1 to grade 2, 2012? So you take this 11,363 over 11,796. That is times 100, you will get this. That is how you calculate for all of them. You need to go through all of them. Then from here, if you get to this level, you pick this over this, you get what you need. Because from this year to this year, these are the number that graduated and so on. So once you do that, you'll be able to get the progression rate. For example, let's look at the progression rate from grade 2 in 2012 to grade 3 in 2013. 2012 to 20. So you, for each year, you are going to calculate for all of them, starting from 2011 to 2017. Now, having done that, you see that you now come up and compute the progression rate. What have we, what have we just done in that computing the progression rate is all those rates we have from 2011 to 2012. 2012 to this, 2016 to this. So you now put that is from grade one to two, from grade two to three, from grade three to four, from grade four, from grade five. So we we'll put all of them. Then you take the average 
sum this plus this plus this plus this plus this and divide by the total number. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when you sum them up, you do divide, then that is how you attain the average. Now, the table 3, we will have standard progression rates. All these average you have here, you will have bring them here. That is where you have 96.95, 96.95, all these rate in red, you bring them down here. These are the rates that you get the ratios. To get the ratio, just times uh, it by, divide by 100, it gives you the ratios that you have in here. Now, you come up here, the next stage for you is to now apply it just like we did in the cohort analysis to a standard progression ratio. You take a figure of 1,000 and would and apply to obtain the ID. Obtaining, so we have done this, we have TO representing the first school year or the base year. Now here we have TO, students in TO, that means 1000 equals grade one entry year. Now you come up in TO plus one, that will be the following year now. What do we have in TO plus one, that is assumed. So you now have 1000 times 96.95. That is the ratio that we had the rates that we have worked with. So you now times it, that will give you 966. Then you pick the next one also. You take the next one that we have plus two. Look at the next ratio. You times it, it will give you this number. That is how you will continue to times it until you get to the end. When you get to grade six, you now stop. Remember the grade one is starting from, that is class one, starting from 1000. So you keep adding all those ratios we have had that the rates we have calculated, you put them here. So on the long run, you have to sum this up and that will give you 5,453,000. So uh, 5,453. So you now come up and say, therefore, the actual input in terms of student year is 5,453. It is assumed that all the 751,000 students in grade six graduated. This is an assumption. It is assumed. Why are we as if it is not given? But if it is given, in most cases, you must know how many actually graduated from the ESCs. So the output is assumed, except is given or stated. Now, how will you get the ID input? The ID input is the actual number of years that is supposed to spend. That is the six years. It's always fixed by the academic sector. Now, here, how would you calculate the wastage? Remember, we have been able to attain all this. Uh, student year. Remember, we have gotten all the student year today. That is what we just had in the next slide that is being brought down here now. All we did is just to pull them up. This is the school year, this is the student year, and we have 5,453, the actual input. Then the output of graduate is 751, the actual output. Now, you get the actual input output the actual input output will be what the total number of students that actually graduated which the same thing we did in the cohort analysis over uh, the input of student the actual input the actual input here is 5453 over that will give us 7.26 and what is the id input output ratio is 6 over 1 that is 6. now what does that imply the wastage, as we have been told, the same method, you have the actual input-output ratio over ID input-output ratio. So the actual is 17.26 over 6. That will give us 1.21. So what does that mean? It means it by interpretation, it means that the internal efficiency with, is the same with the previous in the reconstructed cohort. Here, the internal efficiency is moderate of... 0 0.21 which is 21 percent that is to say the in, on the average 21 percent additional resources were used to train one student that is what it means you see, but unlike the other one that we had so much additional resources that was used but in this case you see that we have only 21 percent additional resources